Hey guys, this is Neil. Welcome back again to my channel. Today I will be painting one of the meals I had in Hakone, which is a salmon ikurachirashi. This is basically salmon sashimi with salmon roe or salmon eggs on top of sushi rice. I had this in a small sushi restaurant where the chef makes it fresh for you and it definitely beats those conveyor belt sushi places. Anyway, I painted this in my usual sketchbook. I made the sketchbook using the Arto paper that I complained about quite a while ago, but since I have a lot of paper left, I decided to just get used to it, which I did, even though I still don't really like it that much. I still much prefer the Canson XL, but I don't want to waste any watercolor paper, so yeah, I just decided to keep painting with it. This is the first time I've tried to paint with the Holbein paint and I have to say the experience was quite pleasurable. The colors pop out way more than the usual watercolor that I used which means I can do less layers and my paintings took less time to finish. Since I still have so much of the Ardo paper, I thought I'd want to see the difference between the normal paint that I use compared to this and I also like to see how it reacts with the Canson XL since I also use a lot of it. I think I mentioned earlier that I got my hands on Arches paper and I've actually went ahead and painted something using the Holbein paint on the Arches paper for another painting and the difference is so drastic but I will be talking about that in the next video. On another note, because I've been using my pencil watercolors recently for galaxy paintings and such for my Skillshare classes, I've left my koi watercolors untouched for quite a while and when I went back to it, most of the paint turned grainy. I don't really know what happened, but I'm glad I have the sets now. I mean, I know my koi palette um, is quite beat up anyway because I used it a lot but it still kind of sucks because uh, it was my most used palette and I wanted to do a comparison but I think it's not possible now. For this one, the first thing I noticed was how fast the paint activated. As I mentioned when I was watching the paints in the unboxing video, that really helped in saving time in general when painting with Holbein paint. I'd have to say it's almost instant, it just dissolves so easily and it activated as if it's just freshly squeezed out of the bottle. This is also something I had to get used to though because I'm so used to trying to get so much paint on my brush due to the lack of pigments but this is something that is so easily adjustable and is just very pleasant in general. Another thing that stood out is also how it glides much easier. I think this is probably because of how pigmented the colors are. So I can use more water and less paint. So the paint slides much easier on paper compared to the student grade paint that I'm used to where I usually have to put so much paint and sometimes not enough water if I want to get more vibrant colors. With the koi, I've always noticed that because I love to layer so much, especially when I paint pastries, up to a certain point the paint turns quite opaque. And someone mentioned in the comments about how Holbein doesn't layer too well, so I'm still kind of curious about this, but for the time being because I haven't had the need to layer too much paint because it's already quite pigmented. I didn't go overboard with my layers but I did notice that as I was swatching some colors were actually quite opaque when you paint with a very thick consistency. So I'm still curious, maybe I want to experiment with the layering with this paint but as I mentioned I don't know if I would even need to layer that much if it's necessary considering how vibrant the paints are naturally. And usually when I use like my koi watercolors, when the paint is wet, it looks quite bright but when it dries, it dulls down quite a bit compared to when it was wet. I mean it's natural for the water to make colors look darker, like if your shirt is wet, it will tend to look darker but um, even though the whole bind turns lighter, it doesn't become dull and that's the main thing that I notice with this watercolor. 
because of all the reasons that I mentioned earlier, I think that this medium also changed my style a bit. It's so much easier to make clearer edges because you don't need to make so many layers. And you know, if you need to layer the exact same thing on top of one another, sometimes the edges doesn't match up, leaving the painting looking a little bit messy. And that's why oftentimes I clean it up using my white gel pen. But so far I've been using less of the white pen to clean the outlines. With this whole bind paint, I tend to use the white pen more for additional textures and such. I also noticed this when I was using my eco line because it's so vibrant and transparent in nature. I did way less layers and in the end it makes my painting look a little bit different. I'm not complaining though because I don't feel like the need to outline so much to finish the painting anymore. It looks more realistic in a way. It looks more like a watercolor painting rather than a mixed media illustration. I'm not sure if that makes sense to you guys or not, but that's what I feel during the couple of times I've been using this paint and I quite like it. I've posted a couple of images that I've painted with the Holbein paint on my Instagram. Um, yeah, so what do you guys think if you guys can see the difference in the style or just even the colors because I noticed that too, it's much more vibrant than my usual paintings. Um, it would be interesting to hear it from other people just to know what you guys think or what you guys see in the painting. Anyway, to wrap this up, I'm really happy with this purchase as you can tell. I feel like it's the perfect timing because I noticed that my koi has given up on me. I'm not even sure if I just feel like the koi is grainy because I've been using the whole bind quite a bit and it's hard to go back or something. So I tried to compare it with my Pentel and my Quatman watercolors and even then it looks really different in terms of color. It's way more dull and it's very grainy even more than usual. It's not anything new because I've noticed that it's more grainy in general than other sets that I have but really not to this extent. I mean I can still try to revive it maybe if I can get rid of the top colors I can still use the rest but yeah who knows I don't think I'm willing to give too much effort because I do have other sets and I have the whole by now um, and in general it was quite worn out to begin with anyway so yeah overall this is definitely a step up from the koi paints that I've been using a lot obviously maybe it's just time to upgrade anyway I think this is all I have to say for this one I hope you guys enjoy the rest of the speed paint and I'll see you towards the end
finishing up this painting, I realized that I did not like the black bowl in the end. I kind of regretted painting that a little bit. I felt like I've probably drawn it out too bulky because I personally think that the bowl takes away from the main dish in the end. I liked it more when the background was just white because the salmon and the ikura looks much more vibrant that way but it's too late and my reference photo wasn't that great either. I took it with my phone and low light and it was also a little bit blurry. Yeah. Oh well, I don't hate it, it's just not the best and that's why being able to draw is much more important than being able to paint because that's basically the structure of the whole painting itself. Anyway, I'm almost done with this painting. I hope you guys enjoyed watching the painting process of this chirashi bowl. Hope you learned and picked up something new by watching the speed paint. Have a good day or night depending on where you are from and I'll see you at the next one. Bye!